All right. Well, good morning, KMBC. Welcome to church this morning. We're glad that you're here to worship with us today. Um, if you're new with us, thank you so much for coming to worship this morning. We do have a Connect card in the chair in front of you. We'd love for you to take it and fill it out as you come in and uh, place an offering plate when it comes by here in just a little bit. But we're glad that you're here today. A couple of announcements and reminders. Next week is homecoming. Um, so Saturday, uh, next Saturday, the 7th, we'll have a church work day at 8 o'clock. So if you can be here to help get the grounds ready for homecoming, we'd love for you to be here for that. Um, 8 o'clock next Saturday morning. And then next Sunday, homecoming. Uh, so we hope that you're planning to stay with us after church that morning for a meal, um, have a great time of fellowship together, but we're looking forward to homecoming. It's always a special time. Um, um, later this month, we'll also have senior adult lunch in, men's breakfast, um, a couple of quick announcements in regards to some things in the community coming up. We are, we're going to have our community trunk retreat on October the 29th from 5 to 7.30 uh, at K-Park, just like last year. So I encourage you, if you can, to be, make plans to be a part of that. There is a, um, a sign-up sheet out in the uh, lobby area as you come in. Uh, please make note of that. Go over and look at that and see what areas you can help to be a part of, whether you want to decorate a trunk. Um, if you want to be at one of the stations, help with food, provide baked goods. If you can't be there that night, then maybe you can just cook some, uh, bake some cookies or a cake or something to give away during the cakewalk. It's always a big hit. So I encourage you, if you can, just to look at that, pray about it, and see where God may have you to help serve on that wonderful night. And then a community event here in our community today, um, this afternoon from 2 to 4, the 40th anniversary of the Tobacco Museum here in Kinley, um, is, a, is a great time just to go and celebrate um, that what God is doing there, or just what are in our community here, a great resource in our community. Um, if, if you're able to go and be a part of that, it's a great way to support our community and the history here in our community um, of Kinley. So I encourage you, if you can, to be there from 2 to 4 today. Uh, but we're glad that you're here. Um, look forward to worship today. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer as we begin. Father, we're thankful for this morning that we can gather in your house today, Lord. We're, God, we're thankful, Lord, for everything you're doing among us. Father, I pray for this moment in time, God, that we can gather in your house to worship you, to make, make uh, Lord, to praise your holy name this morning, Father. Father, we pray in this moment, God, that we would, uh, Lord, be fill, filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we sing your praises and glorify your name and your name alone, Lord, prepare us for your word, for it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning. Go ahead and stand with us as we lift up the name of Christ this morning through song. So good to see you. Glad you're here. Let's get our singing voices ready and praise him this morning. Amen. We were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Till 
that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered them, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored, and the church of Christ was born, in the Spirit, in the flame. blood and in his name in his freedom I am free for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me isn't that good this morning amen praise him for that right here praise the father praise the son praise the spirit on the cross and through that empty tomb. Amen? Because of that, we have our salvation. So undeserving. Continue singing with us right here. Was borrowed for three days. His 
body there would not remain as our God has robbed the grave again our God has robbed the grave amen that's good your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrected. That's good singing. Give, your, give yourself a hand. You did a good job this morning. I know we're missing a couple instrumentalists, but I'm going to allow y'all to make up where, you know, all the songs we're singing this morning revolve around the king. And I'm glad that no matter what happens in this world, we have a king that's sitting on the throne that will reign forever, regardless of what happens down here. Amen. Continue to worship with us in our last song here. Come now, 
beautiful singing this morning. Give yourself another hand. At this time, we're going to have our offering come forward, and then we have a small group that's going to have a special for you. Got to drag the mic out over here. Uh, good morning, and welcome again. Um, thank you for being out here. We had so much to be grateful for, and yes, the blessings of God are just immeasurable. So uh, if you would, please bow your head. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the blessings of life and your amazing love and grace to us. You are the fount of our blessing, Father, and just we ask that you uh, watch over us and continue to bless us on the Sabbath and, and for all the prayers that we have, those that are spoken and those that are unanswered as far as us not verbally speaking out to you, Father, you know what's on our hearts. So just continue to uh, watch over us and guide us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, real quick. The pastor probably already mentioned the work day next Saturday before homecoming. Uh, for those of us that are going to be trimming bushes, we're going to try to start around 8 o'clock because I've got 100 bales of pine straw that are coming around. They'll be here, but the youth are going to try and put them out around 10 o'clock. So we want to have all the power tools out of the way and clean up before the youth actually set out the pine straw. So you can be out here about you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock and stuff like that and bring some biscuits and um, whatever. That'll be fine. All right, thanks. sat silent for too long while the darkness ever strong cast a shadow on this land but we're the children of the light we have hope that's burning bright we weren't made to cower we were made to this morning. All right. And uh, thank you guys. What great singing, what great worship. Just as Ethan said, you guys did a great job worshiping the Lord this morning, preparing us for his word. Um, if you have your Bible, I'm going to take it out with me, but um, don't turn to Acts quite yet. Um, if 
you turn to Matthew 11 uh, this morning, um, there's, there's sometimes in life where, where um, God is just working on you and working on us, I think, as people throughout, throughout our life, He is. And um, th- this last week, I just never came to the realization that this message in Acts is where we needed to go with this week. I think God is just working on my heart and working on me and, and, and in regards to um, us as believers, us as the church. Um, uh, all the songs that we sang this morning are, are, are fitting because they still go with the, the message that I think God has laid on my heart for us today. And, and it's around the heart. You know, as we go through life, um, especially as we get older, uh, we have to make an appointment with the heart doctor to get our heart checked out, right? To make sure our blood pressure is in check, to make sure our heart is doing as it should and pumping the way it should. And there, there's nothing in there damaging our heart because the heart is important. The heart is important to our life in general, but when it comes to the life of a believer, our heart is essential. God looks on the thoughts and the intents of the heart, so it is important for us to regularly put a check on our heart. To regularly look at our heart and see the state of it, where it's at. The title of the message this morning is simply the heart of Christ. The heart of Christ. I don't know about you, but when I look at the scriptures and I look at my life, I look at the, the failures, the, the, the things that I have done in my life, and then look at Christ. I can tell his heart because of the grace and mercy he has shown me. The love that he continues to pour out on me in my life. And the way he always says, you're forgiven. The way he always welcomes us back in when we fall short. The heart of Christ this morning is what we want to understand because that is the heart that we as believers want to strive for. To look to. One thing we must understand is that when we see the Bible speaking of the heart, it's not speaking of our emotional life. It's speaking of what is at the center of all that we are and all that we do as people. Everything that we are as a person, our heart is the center of who we are. It's what defines us. It's what directs us in our life as people. The faith that you put in Jesus Christ. When you accept Him as Lord and Savior of your life occurs when you finally give Him your heart. When the message goes from here and moves about 12 inches down into your heart. And that's the transformation that takes place. Because once your heart is transformed, it begins to transform everything else inside of you and outside of you. Your heart and where it is, is a big issue in the life of a believer. That's why we pray for those who are not a believer who don't know Jesus, that the Lord would begin to soften their heart. To allow the message of the gospel to sink in. Solomon says this about the heart, keep the heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Proverbs 3, 5 later says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Psalm 26, 2 says, examine my heart. That's a scary prayer to pray. Church, when you ask God to examine your heart. But it's needed. Right? We go to the doctor and say, Lord, give me a checkup. Give me a physical. Tell me the condition of my body. Where it's at. Where it's failing. We need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, examine my heart. Where is it? Where am I failing? Jesus himself says these words in Matthew 6. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Romans 10, 10 says, for with the heart one believes. A.W. Pink said this, he said, An honest heart seeks to please God in all things and offend Him in none. The heart matters, church. The heart is essential. In times of trouble, when you're going through difficulties, times where you feel burdened, where you're in despair, desperate for something better to happen or something to change, it's so easy for your heart to be swayed. It's easy for our heart to be taken off of Christ. It's easy for your focus to shift from Jesus Christ to everything else going on around us and lose trust in Jesus. This morning, I want to pull our focus and attention off everything else outside of this place. Everything that may have happened in your life this week, maybe the the stuff that you have coming up this next week, take your attention off of all of that and listen to the words of Jesus. Be comforted by the words of Christ because I believe in these words, He reveals His heart and gives us a picture of the heart that we should strive for in our life. What can we learn from the heart of Christ this morning? So look with me, if you will, at Matthew chapter 11. We're going to be just in verses 28 to 30 this morning. Listen to God's word. It says this. 
Come to me, all who were labor, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these words. Lord, thank you for your heart. Thank you for your love. This morning, as we seek to unpack these words this morning, God, speak into our life. Help us to see the essential picture of our heart. Help us to see your heart, Lord, and understand it for our life. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Jesus is speaking to a group of people in this moment where he is giving this message. And these people were burdened. They were self-righteous people. They were people seeking to do whatever they could to earn, to, to follow the laws, to follow the regulations, the commandments. And on top of everything else they were facing, they, they felt like they were facing an uphill battle. You ever been in a place like that before? Where it feels like you take a couple steps forward and about 10 steps backwards. You move forward some and then you fall right back down. This was the place that these people that Jesus is speaking to in this moment are in. They, 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 they were trying to follow the, to the law to a T, to do what is right. Constantly trying to be good enough to do the right things. They, but they felt like they could not get ahead. In these verses, I see, we see Jesus open up his heart. So let's look this morning at what he reveals. The first is that Jesus gives an invitation. He uses these words, come to me. Come to me. He's offering up an invitation. He, again, he is speaking to people who are burdened. Anyone in here burdened this morning? Are you burdened by your sin? Burdened by life? By difficulties? By troubles? By just what is going on in the world right now around you? Are you burdened this morning? Jesus gives the same invitation. Come to me. He's given this word to these people. Come to me. These people were burdened. Now imagine for a moment. Those that he was speaking to were trying desperately, desperately to do the right thing, to follow the laws, the commandments, and they were burdened by their sin, the fact that they just could not do it. And now Jesus, the Messiah, the promised one, who came to give them life, he's standing before them and he does this. He says, come, come, come to me. Listen, church, what an amazing God we serve because to, the, to them, that was, that was almost insane. They were trying to earn their way to come to Christ, to come to the Lord. And Jesus is now saying, come, come to me. The, the, the reality is even more amazing that, that in our life is that he is still making the same invitation to us. Come to me with your burdens, with your troubles. Come to me. He's still inviting us to come into his presence, to give everything over to him, to trust him with our life, to trust him with the life of our children, to trust him with our jobs, with our homes, with all the, the things that we have in this world, to give them to him, come and lay them at his feet. To give it over. This gives a completely different picture of who Jesus is compared to all the other religions in this world. Especially during that time and in our time today. Jesus openly invites all who will come to come to Him. Every person to come. You don't have to perform. You don't have to be good enough. You don't have to read the Bible enough or pray enough. Jesus says, come. Come to me. Be open and come to me. The invitation is there. Those who were gathered were sinking under the weight of their sins. Much like many people today are sinking under the weight of life, of financial troubles, of the sins in their life that they have that they will not repent of. They feel like it's just bringing them and bogging them down. That the church is under. The church sometimes feels, feels oppressed. Right? Jesus is saying, no, come. Come. Come and bring it to me. Jesus called out all who labor and are heavy laden. He's calling out to those who are hurting and searching, searching for answers in the wrong places, like many today who are laboring, who are laboring and heavy laden, who are burdened with everything happening around us. We know our world is changing. You can look back just over the last few years and see how our world has changed. And we know that more changes are coming. We see it in Scripture. And those changes are not going to make things better until one day when Jesus makes everything better. We know that the burdens may in our life may get bigger, may get deeper. 
And the invitation is still there from Christ. Come. All those who are labored and heavy and burdened in life. Come. Come to me. Stop looking for answers in the world and come to the one who can give the answer that we need. Come and bring our burdens to him. Jesus says to them, I have the answer. I am the answer. And then he doesn't just, he doesn't just give an invitation. This is, I think this is one of the most beautiful parts. Is that Jesus gives us a solution to the problem. The problem is we're burdened under sin. We're burdened by the things of this world. The, 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 the difficulties in life are pushing us down. The hurt, the pain, the diseases, financial struggles, marriage struggles, the struggles of life are all weighing us down. And Jesus says, come, and here's the response. I'll give you rest. I will give you rest. He says, I will give you rest. Now, before you go any deeper here, I want to clear the air. He's not offering nap time, right? Many times we read that and it's like maybe he's offering us a nap. So what does he mean? Well, he uses, Jesus uses the word, come to me all who are labor and are heavy laden. All who indicates that he's speaking to people who are already in condition of being burdened. Those who are facing trouble and difficulty. And he says, to those who respond to that call, Jesus says, I'm going to give you everything you need. But first, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest from the burden. Rest from the load. Rest rest from the guilt. Rest from the shame that you've been carrying. He doesn't say go out and try harder. Like most religions do. That's not what he says. He doesn't say work harder, do better. He says, no, come to me. And I'll give you what your body, your heart, and your soul need. And that is rest. Rest. Rest in me. Rest from the guilt. Rest from the worry. From the anxiety. From the grief that you're facing in this world. Rest from it all. He says, I will give you that rest. Understand this, church. When you submit to Christ and answer His call to come to Him, He gives all that He has to you. It's all available. Now, remember, He is is the the strong one who alone is able to bear the weight of the Father's commands. You think about Him going to the cross. The most horrific, one of the most horrific ways to die. Being hung on a cross. Nails going through the wrist and the feet. Struggling to breathe. The most shameful ways in that time period, most humiliating ways, but also one of the most painful and torturous ways to die. Not only was he facing that, but you know on the cross, the Father took all of our sins, the wrath that we were owed, and placed it upon him. And he carried it, and he took it, and he bore it for us. He did that. He he is strong enough to do it. Church, we are not. We are not strong enough to carry our sin. We are not strong enough to, to, to carry the burdens of life. The pain, the suffering, the issues, the trauma, the troubles. We are not strong enough. We think we are. Especially men, we think that we're big, bad, and strong, and that we, if we show any emotion, then we are failures. How far from the truth is that? How far from the truth is what that would we see in scriptures? Jesus says, Come, and I will give you rest. To the one who thinks they're the strongest, to the one who thinks they're the weakest, we all need the rest that Jesus Himself provides. The burdens relieved, right? The the shame gone, the chains being broken that are holding us down. Many of us are wanting to live the life that God has called us to live, to do the things that God has called us to do, but there's chains that are holding us back. Chains that you may not be able to physically see, but boy, can you physically feel them. The chains of whatever is holding you down because you're afraid to give it over to the Lord, you're afraid to surrender, the sins that are in your life that you're afraid to repent of, whatever it is, you've felt those chains in your life before. And what you need is the rest that the Savior provides. Because in that rest, He's given you forgiveness. Because when you come to Him and you're laying everything before Him, you are repenting and asking for forgiveness. You are repenting and saying, Lord, I need you. I've been trying to do this on my own, and I can no longer. 
And you know what he says? Forgiven. Loved. Cherished. My child. He loves. He loves you. Jesus is giving this call to repentance to the people to turn away from the life that they were living and to turn to Him. To turn away from that self-proclaiming life of trying to do everything they could to earn themselves salvation, to earn themselves to keep the laws, to, do, to keep the commandments, to be self-righteous in their own. He says, that self-righteousness is not what you need. You need my righteousness. You need the righteousness from Christ. Think about this for a moment. The one who is laboring, who is weary, who is heavy laden, is one who has come to the end of their own resources. Right? And there they realize that there's nothing that they can do. And at that point, when a person has ringed out every ounce of thinking that they can handle on their own, is when they finally realize the need for Jesus. Maybe you've been there before. You feel like you don't know where to turn. In life, you've tried everything that you could. And Jesus is saying, you haven't tried it all. Turn to me. Many of us know better, right? Maybe you came to Christ many years ago, but then maybe you've gotten off track and you have let the world take over. You've taken your eyes off Christ and you feel like you're at the bottom and you don't know what's way to turn. And you're trying to claw yourself out of the hole, out of the pit that you've got yourself into. And you finally realize, I need to turn back to Jesus, but what if he doesn't accept me? The Bible teaches, I promise you, he does accept you. My, one of my favorite stories is the prodigal son. I told you that multiple times as we've been together. Where the son leaves and goes. Squanders the father's inheritance. But the father never stops watching for the son. He never stops watching for the son. Some thinks, well, maybe, maybe he'll take me back and I can just be a servant. Maybe I'll go back. He tried to do everything he could on his own. Then he finally comes back. And what does he see? No idea the father had been waiting and watching. He sees his father waiting. And then he sees his father running and embracing the son. And the father doesn't just say, yes, you can be my servant. No, he throws a party. He gives him the best of the best. He gives him the robe, the ring, everything he can. To remind his son, no matter what you've done, you are still mine. And I love you. It's a beautiful picture that we see of what Jesus does. Listen, that word that Jesus uses for rest literally means to refresh or revive. To to revive. He promises rest to all those who come to him willingly in repentance and humble faith. Rest from trying to earn your way to heaven. From trying to earn favor with Jesus. Right? Rest from the worries, the anxiety, the weariness of life, burdens that rob you from peace and joy. When was the last time your soul was truly at peace? When was the last time you had the joy of the Lord in your life? Maybe it's because you need the rest that He provides. To stop trying to do it on your own. To start looking to Him and trusting Him every step of the way, even when things really don't make sense. You trust in Jesus. Rest in Him knowing that no matter what happens, no matter what this life throws at you, your eternity is secure in Him. And that no matter what, the best is yet to come. Because you will be with Him for all of eternity. Rest knowing that He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ. Rest knowing that you can 100% fully rely on Him. Fully trust Him. And He will supply all of your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. Rest. It's what we need. He gives an invitation. He gives us the answer. But then he gives an example. I I, I love pictures in God's Word. You know this about me. I love when God paints pictures for us. I think when we go out and we see the sun setting or the sun rising. Beautiful pictures that God creates in His creation. The beauty of God's creation. The beauty of God's Word. It paints it and lays it out there perfectly for us. He says, take up my yoke and learn from me. A picture. A picture in these words. Well, let's understand what a yoke is first. Now, you may know this, but a yoke is part of a harness that was placed on an animal's back, like an ox. They didn't have John Deere tractors back in the day. They had ox. 
oxen that would go and, and use to plow the fields, to pull the cart, to, to mill, to use to mill the grain, right? Or it was used by, it was used by the animal's master to keep the animal, animal under control and guide it. The yoke would be put on either one or two animals and it was a shared yoke. Typically, one of them would be much stronger than the other one, and the stronger one knew the commands of the master, and it guided the other one along. The weaker one learned to listen to the master's voice as they went. Do you see the beauty in this when we hear the word yoke? Do you see the beauty in this? The the picture here is that Jesus is the stronger one, and we are the weaker one. He is the stronger one who was able to bear the weight. And when we take the yoke of Christ, we are submitting to Him and walking with Him through this life. He says, take up my yoke and learn from me. He sets the standard. He sets the the example for us. Right When we come to Jesus, He gives us the ability to follow Him. The word for learn is very similar to the word that is translated make disciples in Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Jesus is essentially saying, when you come to me and learn from me how to be my disciple, how to follow me in this life, you will find rest. Because you will be doing what you were created to do. If you're in this moment in time in your life, and you are doing a job, you're doing a profession that is not what God created you to do, you will not be restful, right? You will be burdened. You will always not, you will feel like you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You will feel like you are never getting to the point of satisfaction. But when you realize that God is calling you to something greater, calling you to do something different in your life, even if it may not make sense, that's when that fulfillment comes. When God called me from the business world into the ministry, it did not make sense to the human side, to the fleshly side. But when it comes to the life that God had truly called me and my family to live, it made perfect sense. Perfect sense. How often we forget that Jesus alone knows the Father, reveals the Father's will, and perfectly obeys the Father. So when when we come into His yoke, He leads us in how we are to walk with the Father and obey the Father and trust the Father. Because when we are in the yoke with Christ, we work in peace with God, not against Him. When we try to go at it alone, we can sometimes work against Him and what He's trying to get us to do. How often we do that in the church? We come up with our own agendas, our own ways, and we work against what God is trying to get us to do. We work against the mission of Christ. But when we come alongside of Him and become with Him into the yoke, we work in peace and harmony, meaning we obey God by learning from Jesus. Everything we do, it is Christ leading, Christ guiding, Christ centered, Christ enabled, Christ teaching. It's centered upon Jesus when we come alongside of Jesus and not try to do it on our own. So he sets the example, but he also shows his heart. And this is what I want you to see. Two words, gentle and lowly. They don't seem like very strong words. They don't seem like very strong words. You don't see a a, a superhero Right, and a super, uh, uh, one of the Marvel movies, you don't see them describing the Incredible Hulk or Iron Man or Captain America with the words gentle and lowly. No, powerful, strong. Right? Uh, you, don't, you don't see them described as being gentle and lowly. But those two words perfectly describe our Savior. Our, our Lord. Jesus says, take up my lo- yoke and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Jesus pulls back the curtains and shows us His heart. His heart. As you read through the Bible, it's easy to get glimpses of the heart of Christ in the way He loves, in the way He serves, how He treats people, all people. Not just certain people, but all people. But here's the only place in Scripture where He specifically lays out His heart. Jesus says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Beautiful picture. Of our Savior. The word gentle is used three other times in the New Testament. Three times. In Matthew 5 5, it says, the meek, same word being used for gentle, will inherit the earth. Matthew 21 5, Jesus is coming to you, humble, same word as gentle there, same word in the Greek, and mounted on a donkey. And then 1 Peter 3 4, the hidden person of, hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Meek, humble, gentle. Meek, humble, gentle. Again, not words. 
that you think would describe the Savior of the world. The one who comes back to push back the darkness, to defeat the enemy. But it's the exact description we get of Jesus. Meek, humble, gentle. Jesus is not harsh. He is not reactionary. He is not easily agitated. No, he is the most understanding person in the universe. The the most natural posture for him is not pointing fingers, rather open arms. He's not pointing fingers at us saying, look what you did. Because of you, I had to go to a cross. Look what you did. Why do you keep doing this? No, he says, listen, come. I know what you did, but come. I know what you've done in your past. Come. I know the mistakes you made over the last year. Come. And I'll give you rest. Come and I will give you rest. He gives open arms. The other word lowly generally translated as humble throughout the New Testament. However, this word typically does not refer to a virtue. But but to humility in a sense of being thrust down by life's circumstances. The point is this. Is that Jesus is fully accessible. When you are in the lowest of lows and when you're the highest of highs, he is fully accessible, fully accessible to you for everything that he is. He is completely accessible and approachable, unlike other people who who let a select few in, right? There are hoops hoops you have to jump through to get to them, right? People that you have to impress. All you must do is simply open up yourself to Christ, right? Jesus says, are you struggling? You're hurting? You're facing troubles? Are you bogged down by life? Are you drowning under the sin in your heart in this moment? You feel like the world is crashing down around you. There's no way out. Jesus says, come. 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 And the amazing thing is, you don't have to unburden yourself before you come. You don't have to try to release those burdens from you. You don't, you don't have to collect yourself up. i gotta, I got to get myself up. i got to fix myself up before I go see Jesus. You don't have to wipe away the tears. You don't have to do any of that. Your burden is what qualifies you to come. He says, if you have burdens, come. If you've got sin in your heart, come. If you're facing difficulty and trouble, come. If you feel like life is weighing you down and you don't know which way to turn, come. The answer is the same. Jesus says, my arms are open. The desire of Jesus Christ is that you find rest in the midst of the storm that you're facing. That you find rest in the midst of a Savior who loves you. And that you realize He is the rest that you are seeking. He is the the, the peace that you are seeking out in this world. Jesus doesn't just simply, though, meet us in our time of need. No, He's with us throughout, throughout our time of need and throughout the time when things are good. He never tires of sweeping us into His embrace. Uh, this picture comes to my mind, and, and we have this a lot because, you know, we have some young kids in our house, like, like many of you do, right? You know what happens when a, a child is tired, worn out, hungry, right? You, well, that's called the perfect storm, right? right? Temper tantrum city happens, right? And they're, when they're tired, when they're, when they're exhausted, they, they get emotional, their behavior goes off the rails, and you're like, Somebody needs to exercise a demon out of this child, amen? But that's not what they need. What do they need? They need their mom or dad to come and pick them up and embrace them. They need to see the love of a loving mother or father. To get down on their level and pick them up and hug them. Because they don't really understand what's happening around. Church, do you realize that's exactly what Jesus does to us? Because we like to pick on toddlers, young kids. That they get exhausted and emotional and can throw tantrums. But how many of us have been exhausted emotional and thrown tantrums lately? Our tantrums may look a little bit different than toddler's tantrums. I hope they do at least. If not, we need to pray for you. <laughs> but, but we get in this place and we don't need to be told that we're bad or that we're broken. We need the embrace of a Savior to remind us that He's there with us in that moment. To come to Him when we're burdened. To come to Him when we have heavy, la- heavy laden with life. When we feel like we're at the bottom of the pit and we don't know where to turn. Even if, and, and listen, we didn't get to the pit because of Jesus. Right? We didn't get to the bottom because of Him. We got to the bottom because of us, right? The choices, decisions we made put us there, flat on our back. And He still says, come. 
He still says come because his heart is gentle. His heart is lowly. And he wants to show us that. You get that beautiful picture. He calls out to us and says, I'm here. Come. If you're hurting, come. If you're burdened, I'm here. If you're tired, I'm here. If you're troubled, I'm here. Whatever you're facing, I'm here. He is gentle and lowly at heart. I mean, imagine him down on his knees with his arms wide open saying, come. I, I, I never get over the picture of sometimes when I, when I was working um, for the software company prior to going in the ministry, I used to have to travel a lot. And so Katie, and, and at that time it was Spencer, it was a, it was a little toddler, and, and Kylan, was a, uh, Kylan wasn't even here yet, right? It was, and so I would come back from the airport, or come to the airport, and they would come to get me. I'll never forget him running from Katie to me and that embrace. The beauty of that, 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 that picture to me is, is the picture of us, to me, of running to Christ. And, and the beautiful thing is, is, is he'll never turn his back on us, right? His arms are always open. Ready to forgive you, to love you. Jesus is the one who gave his life for us, who took our place on the cross, who took the weight of our sin. The one who the Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the creator, the sustainer of life, the prince of peace, the Lord of lords, the king of kings. He is God in the flesh, Emmanuel. That Jesus is calling out to every single one of us today, saying, if you're having trouble... If you're struggling, come. If you're worried, come. If you're burdened, come. Are you disappointed by life? Come. Are you mad? Come. Are you frustrated? Come. Do you feel like you're being crushed under the weight of sin? Come. He says, come to me, but you must choose to come to him. He is there, arms wide open. He says to take his yoke and learn from me, to follow him, that he is gentle and lowly at heart, meaning he is accessible, he is approachable. Church, fall into his arms today. Allow him to minister to your soul, to your heart, to check on your heart. Because listen, when you submit yourself to Jesus and you give your life to him and surrender every piece of him, it is the greatest freedom you'll ever experience. It truly is. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and the burden is light. Come to me. He says, I've got this. Your burden is heavy. Mine is not. I've got this. Just church, when push comes to sub, the Christian life is not about what you and I can do in and for the kingdom of God our own. No, it's about following Jesus and walking with him daily. And choosing to live for Him every single day of our life. Knowing that He helps us in our struggles. He helps us with our battle with temptation. He helps us in our time of suffering and trials. He enables us to live the righteous life. We don't have to try to earn the righteous life. No, He enables us to do it through His righteousness that He's given us freely. He empowers us to live our lives in Him. And in in the midst of everything happening in the world around us. So what do you do this morning? The first, repent of the sin in your life that you may be feeling weighing you down, burdening you this morning, burdening your heart this morning. Don't bear the burden of sin in your life any longer. Repent. Come to Him. Lay it at the altar this morning. Come and pray as we sing in a few moments. Come and give it to Him and say, Lord, I'm repenting of my sin. I am turning away. And don't know know this. He will not judge you. He will welcome you. The sin that is in your heart right now that you feel like is embarrassing and shameful, lay it on the altar. I had this one young man in a church that we served at previously. He was dealing with an addiction. His addiction was to pornography. I counseled with this young man for, for for, for many, many months. Finally, we got to the point where he got to the point. God got him to the point. I didn't I didn't do it. God got him to the point where he realized that he needed to confess it. Not confess it to me, confess it to God. We had talked about it a lot, but he hadn't talked about it with his Savior. Because he was afraid of... We, we, we came to the point of where he figured out that he was afraid of what God was going to think of him or the judgment that he was going to perceive, even though he knew that Christ forgives our sin. And so he prayed right there in my office that day. Repented finally really truly repented of that sin in his life before he walked out the door that day he said i've never felt freer because the burden was lifted 
He didn't say, I never felt more judged. He said, I never felt more free. Because that burden was gone. Now, your sin may not be an addiction to pornography. Your sin may be something else in your life that you are hiding, afraid to repent of, afraid to bring to the foot of the cross. And say, Lord, forgive me. I can promise you, you're not going to be judged. What you are going to be is free. Free from the weight of that sin. Free from the weight of it holding you down. The second way this morning is maybe we need to humble ourselves. Jesus was the most humble person to ever walk the face of the earth. Majority of the time, we are the most prideful people to ever walk the face of the earth. We know the Bible teaches that pride goes before the fall, right? We see that throughout life. We see that throughout Scripture. We see that theme there, right? In our heart, we need to have that examine our heart motive. And Lord, is my heart full of pride or is it full of humility? We want to be a humble people, ready to seek and follow the Lord and do as He pleases. But we can't with a heart full of pride, right? We must come to Him humble, humbly before Him. Right? Uh, we see in Chronicles that before God is going to hear and bring revival and, do, and, and, and heal the nations, right? what do we have to do? We have to come and humble ourselves before Him first. Uh, maybe this morning we need to come and ask God to rid ourselves of the pride. Lord, help me to be humble. Help me to be humble in our life. Uh, maybe this morning you just need to say, I need to rest in Jesus. Maybe you have guilt in your life. You're feeling guilty about something. Maybe you're just worried about something. The anxiety is in your life. The grief. Maybe you have grief in your life. You're facing an insurmountable, what seems insurmountable, a stack of troubles in your life. Maybe you're facing financial difficulties, financial struggles, marriage struggles, pain, whatever it is. You're facing a a long road of of treatment or, or a disease in your life. And you're saying, Lord, I need to rest in you. And come this morning. He says, come, come. You come to him and he says, I will give you the rest that you need. I will give you rest. Maybe you just need to spend some time rejoicing in Christ this morning. Rejoicing in who Jesus is. Rejoicing in the love that he has for you. Rejoicing in the fact that he's always there. Rejoicing in the fact that his invitation is always come. Rejoicing in the fact that He maybe has already picked you up out of that pit. Rejoice in the fact that He came down and got you. You didn't have to clean yourself up. Like most of the time, you know, in life, when we're, when we're getting ready to go somewhere, if you've been out working in the yard, you've got to get all cleaned up and, and look decent before you go out in public. You don't have to do that with Jesus. You don't have to clean yourself up. He says, come just like that. And we'll work on cleaning you up as we go. As you come in the yoke with Christ. And He bears the weight and you learn to walk with Jesus. Put Jesus at the center. Putting Jesus at the center of your marriage. The center of your life. The center of your job. The center of raising your children. Whatever it is, you put Him at the center. Maybe you just need to rejoice in the fact of what Christ has done in you. In your life. Rejoice in your salvation this morning. Rejoice in the forgiveness and the freedom that's found in Jesus. Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms. I think I say that about every psalm that I ever read and study. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24 says this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any, see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Could you imagine if that was our prayer every morning when we woke up? Lord, search me. Know my heart, Lord. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there's any grievous, any evil way intentions in me. And then lead me in your way. What if that was our prayer before we went to bed at night? Lord, lead me. Lord, search me, know me, try me, and then lead me. This morning we can rejoice in the fact that even though our hearts are sometimes cold, our hearts are sometimes hard, our hearts are sometimes turned off, The heart of Christ is one of welcoming. It's gentle. It's lowly. And He wants you to come in and be under His yoke and allow Him to walk with you through this life, through the difficulties you're facing right now. This morning, surrender your life to Him. Surrender and say, Lord, I need to come into the yoke. I need to come in because I'm trying to do this on my own. 
Maybe that is your prayer this morning. However you need to respond, my prayer is that you simply respond in a moment as we sing. But let's pray together before we sing. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, that we know that we have a Father, that we have a Lord, that we have a Messiah, that we have, Lord, we have everything we ever needed in Jesus. And Father, we can come and we can lay our burdens down at your feet. We can look to you in all of your ways, Lord. We can trust you and know, God, that no matter what, God, that the invitation has come. This morning, if there are some here who are burdened and heavy laden, Lord, let them come. Trying to do life on their own, let them come. Trying to be a parent on their own, Lord, it's impossible. Let them come. Trying to be a husband and wife on their own? Let them come, Lord. Find rest in their marriage. Find rest in their financial stresses. Find rest in their parenting. Find rest in their jobs. Find rest in their walk with you, Lord. Let us come, Lord. Lord, as we sing this beautiful song, Lord, to be glorified in us, Lord. Lord, you can't be glorified in us if there's sin in our heart, God. Lord, let this be an altar of repentance this morning. As we think about these words to be glorified through us in our life, God. Now that's our prayer, God, but let us come first and repent of the sin that's hidden in our hearts. Lord, let us come. Father, speak as only you can as we seek to glorify you in this time of response, Lord. Help us, Father, for it's in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us this morning? humbled, Lord, in your presence today, Father. Humble, Father, God, that for this time of worship, Lord, humble just to gather and celebrate, God. Lord, let that be our prayer today, Lord, to be glorified in this church, to be glorified in our life, Lord, to be glorified in all that we say and do, Lord, to know that as we leave this place, Lord, that as we go out into the community, Lord, that we are to seek to glorify you as we go, as we live. And, and Father, many times we, we fail to do so, Lord, because out of the burdens of life. Lord, and as we've been reminded in your word this morning, if we are in a time of burden, a time of grieving, a time of difficulty, Lord, let us come to you. Because our whole goal and purpose in life is to bring glory and honor to you and you alone, Lord. Father, we 
Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and glory that you are due. Lord, we thank you, God, that your invitation has come. We thank you, God, for the heart that you have. For the fact that, God, that you bear our burdens. That you allow us to come into your yoke, Lord. And learn to walk with you. To be guided by you, Lord. To be taught by you, Lord. Father, as we leave today, Lord, go with us. Help us, Lord, in those moments where we feel like we're sinking. Help us. In the moments where we feel like we don't know where to turn, remind us to turn to you, Lord. Father, we love you. We praise your holy name today, Lord. We praise you for who you are and what you do. For it's in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, church. We love you. We thank you. Be careful as you leave today. God bless you.